Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone How are you today? I hope everyone are in a good condition I am really appreciate for your presence in this morning meeting So, uh, as the CEO of Pokong Holdings Berhad My purpose in help this meeting is to discuss and hear the presentation about the performance of our company So, let's start our meeting First of all, I would like to ask Nur Hazikah as our Chief Operating Officer to give short explanation about the nature background. Thank you, Mr. Wali, as our CEO. So, as we know, Papa Hodins Berhad is a Malaysian jewelry company with a strong presence across the value chains from design to manufacturing and retails. John Yesen is a founder of Papa Hodins Berhad in 1976. The company has put a strong brand reputation and now has 93 branches across the country. Designer product portfolio include over 150,000 design in gold, platinum, silver, and inlet jewelry. In 2001, a manufacturing facility in Shah Alam was established to produce mass produce design and jewelry specially ordered for Pokok. In 2004, the company was listed on the Bursa Malaysia. The company has a uh, six main business activity, namely retail, manufacturing, property investing, overseas investing, and the last one in franchise. The inventory jewelry brand of the company features beautiful contemporary design as well as special team speech. Uh, the Disney collection from the United States is on display as is the two uh, ninety two thousand two Luca Carachis and Ma Ma Moraglioni jewelry collections from Italy. In addition, the company is authorized authorizes the distro, uh, number of inventor international jewelry branch. Thank you, Hadika. Now let's move to the next agenda. I would like to ask Nur Irda Farahida and Nur Malian Aida as our financial manager and her assistant to continue with the horizontal analysis part. Okay, thank you to our CEO, Mr. Walid Udin, for the question. I will present the horizontal analysis of our company from year 2018 to 2020. For your information, Encik Waliuddin, I just want to explain several ratio and the rest I will pass to Aida for continuing. Okay, firstly, liquidity ratio. In this ratio, they have three types that is current ratio, quick ratio, and networking capital. Let's we go to current ratio first. The formula to calculate is current asset divide current liability. From this, we found that in year 2020, our company get the higher time that is 3.87 times compared to the year 2018 and 2019. This cost year 2020, our company have ability to pay its short-term obligation on time. Next, quick ratio. The formula to get it is current asset minus inventory and divide current liability. From this, we also found that year 2019, the company has the higher time that is 1.28 times compared to the year 2018 and 2020. This cost in year 2019, the company have the ability to pay the short-term obligation. Lastly, is networking capital. The formula is current asset minus current liability. From this, we found that year 2020 has the higher amount that is 444,570,052 ringgit compared to the year 2018 and 2019. This absolute measure year 2020 liquidity better than 2018 and 2019. Next, we go to the next ratio that is profitability ratio that have four types. Firstly, we go to the net profit margin and the formula to get it is earning after tax divided sale multiply 100. From that, we found that year 2020 have the higher percentage that is 3.26% in return to shareholder rather than year 2018 and 2019. Next is return on equity. The formula to get it is earning after tax divide total equity multiply 100. From this, we found that year 2018 get the higher percentage that is 10.03% in return to shareholder rather than year 2019 and 2020. Next is written on asset and the formula is earning after tax divide total asset multiply 100. From this, we found that year 2019 get the higher percentage which is 5.25% in returning on firm investment rather than year 2018 and 2020. Lastly is operating profit margin. The formula to get it is operating profit divide sale multiply 100 and this formula cost that in year 2019, company get the higher percentage which is 4.38% than year 2018 and 2020. This show that in year 2019, the company more productivity. That's all for me and I will pass to Aida to continue the next ratio for horizontal analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Irda. Okay, now let me continue to the horizontal analysis for Pokong Harding Berhad. For your information, this part we will find the leverage ratio. 
So firstly, to find out the debt ratio, we will use total debt per total equity formula. And from this calculation, we found that in year 2018 has the highest amount of debt with 1.30 times rather than 2019, which 0.88 times and 2020, which 0.3 times. Okay, next, to find out the debt ratio on asset, we will use total debt per total asset formula. And from this calculation, we found that in year 2018 is the highest amount debt to finance asset with 0 0.56 times rather than 2019 and 2020. However, the time interest earned for Bokong Holding Berhad, we can see that in year 2020 is the highest time with 0 0.30 times and this firm can meet loan requirement and lower risk of default rather than 2018 and 2019. To calculate this part, we use EBIT per interest expenses. Okay, now let's move on to another part, which is to find out the activity ratio for Bokong Hardings per high. So for the inventory turnover shows that in year 2018 is the highest times, which 73.54 times. This means 2018 ratio is more effectiveness in inventory to generate sales than 2019 and 2020. To find this inventory turnover, we use COGS per inventory formula. So next, for total asset turnover, we use sales per total assets formula. And from the calculation, we found that in year 2019 has the highest times with 2.08 times. This show in the effectiveness of total asset to generate sales rather than 2018 and 2020. So this part, we also find the account receivable turnover by using sales per account receivable formula. So the final answer for every year, we found that in year 2020 has the highest times with 146.23 times. This shows in the effectiveness of Pohkong Harding in collecting receivable rather than 2018 and 2019. In addition, we also find that fixed asset turnover in year 2019 has the highest times with 5.68 times and this is the effectiveness of fixed asset rather than 2018 and 2020. To find this part, we use sales perfect asset formula. So that's all from me. Thank you, Nur Irda and Nur Malena, for the clear and good presentation just now. Next, we will proceed for the vertical analysis with our competitor company, which is Tomei Berhad Company, that will be presented by Nur Farah Anissa and Alia Najiha as our marketing manager and assistant marketing manager. Thank you to Mr. Waliuddin for giving me a chance to speak. So, today I'm going to present about the vertical analysis for Pohkong Holdings Berhad and Tomei Consolidated Berhad. I will make a comparison of the liquidity ratio for both companies. In liquidity ratio, there are current ratio, quick ratio, and networking capital. First, Pohkong Holdings Berhad has a high current ratio of 3.87 times compared to Tomei Consolidated Berhad. Second, Pohkong Holdings Berhad also has a high quick ratio of 0.33 times. That Pohkong Holdings Berhad has more working capital compared to Tommy Consolidated Berhad. The total working capital owned by Pohkong Holdings Berhad is 444,570,052 ringgit. Next, I will make a comparison about the profitability ratio. In the profitability ratio, I will make a comparison of net profit margin return on equity, return on asset, and operating profit margin. So, for net profit margin, Tomei Consolidated Berhad has a high net profit margin of 5.56% compared to Poco Holdings Berhad of 3.26%. Second, Poco Holdings Berhad has a high percentage for return on equity which is 4.28%. Third, Tomei Consolidated Berhad has a high return on asset percentage of 6.51% while uh, Pohkong Holdings Berhad has a lower percentage of 3.08%. Lastly, Tomei Consolidated Berhad has a high percentage for operating profit margin of 8.08% compared to Pohkong Holdings Berhad. So, that's all for me. I will pass it on to Ms. Alia Najihal to present on the next ratio. So, I will continue for number 8 for leverage ratio. Number 8 is debt ratio on equity. Tomei has high debt on equity of 0 0.92 times than Pohkong of 0 0.39 times. The difference is 0 0.53, 0 0.53 times. Number 9, debt ratio on assets. Tomei has high debt ratio on assets of 0 0.48 times than Pohkong of 0 0.28 times. So the difference is 0 0.20 times. 
Number 10 is time interest earned. Tomei has higher time interest earned of 4.44 times while Poco is 0 0.30 times. The difference is 4.14 times. For activity ratio, number 11 is inventory turnover. Tome has higher inventory turnover of 1.08 times while Pohkong is 1.00 times. The difference is 0.08 times. Number 12 is total asset turnover. Tome has higher total asset turnover with 1.70 times than Pohkong with 0.94 times. The difference is 0.23 times. Number 13, a car receivable turnover. Pocong has higher account receivable turnover with 146.23 times than Tomei with 16.75 times. The difference is 129.48 times. And the last one is fixed asset turnover. Tomei has higher fixed asset turnover with 16.38 times than Pocong with 3.86 times. So the difference is 12.52 times. Thank you. Thank you for the both of you for the detailed explanation of vertical analysis. Before we end our meeting this morning, I will ask Nur Habibah as our risk officer to give a conclusion related to our discussion. So the first of conclusion is regarding the proposal, uh, it is hoped that Tomei considerably high and Pork Kong Holding Berhad will establish a, a partnership between two companies to share ideas about management and financial consistency and to benefit both parties. Second, they are required to conduct promotion using advertisement on the internet, for example, and store website, Shopee, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and various other social networks. Third, uh, these two companies should create more branches to be known, not only the country of the origin, but also in other countries. Lastly, they should uh, be able to benefit the, their loyal customer by managing price and donating a portion of sales. Uh, proceed or profit to orphan and others in need. Thank you. Now we have reached the end of the meeting this morning. Before I end this meeting, I hope the discussion we have had can help our company to become better in the future. So far from me, thank you again for attending this meeting. So I hope we will meet again in the next meeting. Goodbye.